And we're back. Welcome to the show. I'm Yanni Rude. And I'm just Terrell. You ever been out somewhere and overheard two people having crazy conversations? Yeah, well, you know what? We are those people. And we've been having these conversations since college. Yeah, it's the regular guys, random thoughts. Married at First Sight, season 14, Boston recap of part two of the reunion. There should not have been a part two because there was nothing about this part two I needed that right. I had any questions answered. It's like, no, it doesn't matter. I've seen everything I need to see and part one of the reunion should have been done. But you're a good person, so that's why you watched it. Now, if being a good person is Alyssa, then I'm an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are, but you know, <laughs> that's not why he's having this attitude towards Married at First Sight. Not because he's an asshole, just because he's not really a fan of reality TV. That's what Terrell is. Not a fan of reality TV, but here's how we got here and doing these recaps. Because at one point in time, he decided to make a deal with the devil, said he'd never watched The Bachelor until they had a black bachelor. Hey, 2020 hit, and they're like, hmm. Let's give Matt James a shot. And so, and to Matt James, Terrell's stuck watching the show. So me being a good friend that I am, I watch it with him. And I'm no fan of The Bachelor. Well, like I said, he's no fan of reality TV. But in return, being the good friend he is, he decided to watch one of my favorite shows, Married at First Sight, season 13. And then, of course, halfway through that season, he says, if Gil and Merle make it, I know they're not going to, sir, but if they do, we'll do season 14. Sure enough, on decision day, they both said yes. And voila, here we are. 422 weeks later into season 14, we're at the part two of the reunion. <laughs> and Terrell is so excited. Yep. And no more deals with the devil at all. I can't beat the prayer warriors, apparently. So no more deals with the devil. Prayer warriors. I tried to make unite. one that I was going to win. I tried to make one that was going to win. Prayer warriors said, nope. Chris and Alyssa are going to divorce early. <laughs> <laughs> oh man look uh, as we go through this parts of the reunion um you know i agree with you we didn't need two parts but since we did have two let's knock it out the women were the first up to bat and um is it me or well jasmina and Lindsay making a ton of excuses for elijah yeah because they all bonded mm -hmm. and so i i think they're trying to you know, you're not going to make them look bad. You're not going to call them out because y'all are all friends or whatever. I mean, let's just be honest. We saw some weird, crazy shit from Elijah on that's just not normal mm -hmm. in most cases. So, yeah, they're they're all BFFs. So, they're, of course, they're going to have his back. So, I think they probably were. You know, something else that stood out to me when the women were on stage was that whole um, Lindsay montage. It's It was classic. It was classic Lindsay. Um, but I think the one thing that stood out to me is the fact that... Um, she said that she was receptive to feedback. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that too. I was just like, wow, that just sounds like an interview I was in. I'm always open to feedback. <laughs> Tell me about some feedback you got you didn't disagree with. I've never gotten feedback. <laughs> yeah. She, she's not open to feedback at all. Mm -hmm. um, I think it showed throughout. Mm-hmm. Uh, every time Mark told her something, she tried to do the opposite and blame it on him. Of course. But to me, Lindsay's no different than Alyssa because Lindsay thinks she's a good person. <laughs> well, you know, I love speaking of those two people and that wonderful comment. I love the fact that um, uh, the comments that Lindsay had on Alyssa and the fact that she kicked it all off by saying, you are not a good person. <laughs> it's like saying you are not the father. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was interesting to hear some of the backstory of, of some of the stuff that happened and such petty crap. Mm -hmm. You know, I stopped, you know, Jasmina. Yeah, I stopped following her, though, on social. Yeah. You know, who gives a shit? Like, why do y'all care so much about That's because that? you don't, that's just because you don't understand the, the, the inner workings of social media because you're not big on IG and stuff like that. So that's why you're like, who cares? If you unfollow me on Instagram, I still have your number. I have your address. <laughs> like, what else do I need? Like, I know we're still going to be doing this show. If you unfollow me, I'm like, is the podcast over? We don't do this anymore because <laughs> you're not following Instagram. No, you know, but it's just so petty. And all that pettiness led to all these different arguments. The argument mm -hmm. between Lindsay and Jasmina. Um, what I didn't like, I've annoyed to me, it's just so weak. Like, if you got an opinion, say it. But don't you try know to... Be in the middle, and I don't yes. want anybody not to like me, but 
Exactly. You were a little bit off, but you were also kind of. T- 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 yeah. Just say what you think. Kevin Frazier, I think, dropped the ball because, or maybe he just didn't see it. And the cameras picked it up and this is in post-production. But Noise Face when Alyssa said she had never said anything about Mark and Lindsay's relationship. Why was that never brought back up? Because apparently Noia was like, mm, I don't know if that's so true there, uh, Alyssa. But again, to your point, Noy just sat there and was like, if they don't ask, I say nothing. I'm staying out of the <laughs> shit. Yeah, I was like, come on, Noy, just, just say what you think. And when Jasmine put her on the spot, Okay, you heard my truth. You heard Lindsay's truth. You were in the car. Who's the most right? <laughs> Noi was just like, um, <laughs> well. You yeah. know what I thought, thought was funny, too? When the women were describing the man that the single women would need, and as they're describing for Jasmine, it goes, that kind of sounds like Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, so what you had... You know, <laughs> Lindsay, they were right. They needed a man who's rich. Yeah. Man who's rich, you know, man who's strong. Everything they said. And 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 even not the rich part, um, because I still think, and I, I, I'll say this now, and I'll explain why later, but I really believe that if you look at the couples that were there, who should have really been matched together, especially for Lindsay? I'd probably say Elijah one. Ugh. So after the women were there, the men sat down. Um... And Mark the Goldfish is probably a more accurate description. I mean, I get it. He was bullied as a kid. It makes me question why the experts matched him with Lindsay in the first place, knowing that she's a bully too. Um, You know, but this man actually came out. Mark the Shark. Mark the Shark. Said he was scared of her, which is something you said throughout the season. Yeah, but don't say that shit on TV, man. Um, <laughs> You're like, yeah, it may be true, but goddamn. Yeah, don't, don't say that on TV, man. Just like, He's that's what the you truth. say to your therapist. That's what you say to your therapist. You don't say it on TV because I'm sorry. If we are, if we are friends, I just couldn't look at him the same. I'd be like, on TV, dude? This is <laughs> yeah, and, and here's what I'm curious about. I'm curious to know what our... Uh, the women that listen to our show, I'm curious what they think mm-hmm. because I always was kind of brought up that women don't like a guy like Mark. Like they don't like that type of energy. Like he just comes across very, like we always been joking that he's not a shark. He's a guppy mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, what woman wants a guy that's like that. Now there are some, and, and there are a lot of women that don't have the personality that a Lindsay does, mm-hmm. but there's no way Lindsay was ever going to be a match for this dude. Right. Like, I think the experts thought that he was going to be the one to balance her out. He's not strong enough to do that. Right. You know, she could she push him and get him into doing stuff? Sure. He couldn't rein her in. And that's just not who he is. So I just don't I I just don't understand why they match these two. If that was the thought and then just seeing how it all played out, because Mark just doesn't have that that energy in him to be able to handle anybody like that. Yeah. That is that is actually very true, and you're right. I again, I have no idea why they matched them together. Um, I also want to know what happened to the uh, all the footage after they played that Alyssa "I'm a good person" montage because they just seemed to skip right past it. They played that montage and like, okay, on to the next thing. I'm like, what happened? Was, did did the guys go in on Alyssa so much that they were like, yeah, we're going to have to just cut all this because we can't have them bashing this woman on stage, no matter how bad she was. Uh, so that's just, that's my thought when I saw that. Cause I was like, okay, what are they going to say? Oh, nothing. <laughs> well, she's going to walk off the stage. <laughs> She'll just walk off the stage. You know, you already had to play it. And then if they allowed everybody to have some commentary, she's just, what is she going to do? Grab her Kleenex. I don't really appreciate this. Yeah, I'm being attacked. I'm a good person. Ah! She's going to run off the show. Facts. They wouldn't have gotten her back out. You're absolutely right. And they needed to get get her back out. We'll get to that when we get to um, the part. But, you know, right after the guys were on stage, which I thought they kind of rushed through, which was good. Let's get it out of the way. Um, they brought up the experts. Um, I forgot they were on the show. Um, they weren't there all season. So <laughs> Dr. Pepper, um, Pastor Cal and Dr. Viviana, or as, like you, as you like to call them, um, you know, Pastor Troy. And I think Dr. Viviana almost reminds me of Deanna Troy from Star Trek The Next Generation. But the <laughs> fact that 
and they thought Alyssa and Chris was a surprise. It's a surprise to me, to be quite honest. <laughs> that I don't get, because to me, why didn't the experts step in right after the at the honeymoon situation? Uh, not the honeymoon, the, after the wedding. Mm-hmm. And just saw the drama. At that point, they should have made a trip. Hey, let's talk. Yeah, you're talking about uh, before the, the honeymoon. honeymoon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, before the honeymoon. They should have like jumped in. But yeah. They let all this play out. But why they're surprised, I don't know. And then, you know, I... I interview people for a living. Mm -hmm. I don't see how you could have one conversation with Alyssa and not see that she's a problem. She's delusional, yes. I I think what happens is in the very beginning, they want to believe what people are saying to them, right? And and I guess, to your point, your job is to sift through the bullshit and find out when this person is just saying what they're saying so they can be a part of the show. And that's definitely not what the experts did at all when it came to her. And we might as well get into, um, you know, to, to Alyssa and Chris when they sat down <coughs> with the experts, because to watch her with them and have absolutely no accountability for any of her words that were caught on camera. And I really wish they would have played the montage of all the mean things she said. So when she's like, well, this is, this, I don't like the way I was portrayed. These are your words. I like that she got called out for that. Mm -hmm. I think it was Dr. Pepper who said that. Because Dr. Pepper was like, wait a minute, you know, (laughs) you're talking about how you didn't like how you were portrayed. Yeah. We didn't make you say anything. Right. You said all those things. (laughs) Right. And then when Dr. um, Viviana, whoever from from Star Trek. Pulled out the receipts. Yeah. uh, (laughs) Dr. Deanna's boy. (laughs) Yeah. She, She pulled out, well, here's what you said you wanted. Yes. And then Uh she started to go to, I'm being attacked. I mean, she's just, she's a terrible person. And I'm sorry, she's not a good person. And when she gets confronted. No, she is a good person. When she gets confronted, she resorts to getting all emotional and trying to lean to the person. It's called breaking out the WWT, sir. It's okay, you can say it. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) She tries to to do that whole emotional thing. And, uh, but she even read it back. And then when Pastor Troy asked her, what are your core values? I don't want to get to specifics. Then why are you talking? <laughs> You're talking in generalizations. That's making it bad. But I still commend Chris Wait, for just how he... Let's reenact that part. You be Pastor Troy. I'll be Alyssa. <laughs> how, how do you, let, me, let me do this right. What are your core values? But I don't want to get into the specifics. <laughs> because I'm a good person. What are some of the values that make you a good person? Go ahead. No, specifically, I can't say, but it's not him. He, he's not a good person. And everything I asked for, you gave me none of it. Absolutely none. None. <laughs> oh my God. It's it's so hard just stomaching her on TV. It's, you know, I, I, I I like that they went straight in at her and they could have kept going. And she's like, I, they told me I was coming up. When I came out here, you guys wouldn't attack me. I'm like, oh, Jesus. Y'all really? was going to be nice. Oh. Of course, they told you anything they could to get you to show up because they knew that we wanted to see this moment. And <laughs> I'm glad we got it. Yeah, again, Chris, I commend him for just his maintaining his composure and demeanor because mm-hmm. I'm a Scorpio. I couldn't have, like, after being treated like that and then finally watching the show and seeing all the stuff that she's been saying about me. Yep. I don't know if I could hold back. Yeah. I don't know if I could hold back. I'd have pulled out my phone of notes, first of all. (laughs) 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 Let me talk about you and your mama. Like, I'm just going to go off. (laughs) So I commend him for just how he handled it because I can't, I, I couldn't do that. Yeah. Alyssa is delusional. We knew that from the very beginning, um, and we called it from the from the minute she walked down the aisle. She was um, she was checked out. Somebody else that I said from the very beginning when they walked down the aisle was checked out was Jasmina. And as her and Michael sat down with the experts, and I know um, you kind of missed a lot of this part with them, but there was this argument that that seemed to have led to their divorce, right? And it was over the use of his computer that she needed to borrow, and it was just miscommunication, right? But you know, when you're checked out of a, of a relationship, all you need is that straw that's going to break the camel's back. And I think that's what it was. This argument that they're using as, as the cause um, 
was really just a straw that broke the cam- camel's back because they've been done for a long time. Their relationship ended when she walked down the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it had nothing to do with any of that. And I think she always kept trying to find reasons to uh, create arguments mm-hmm. and all that. And again, Michael has his issues too. I mean, the dude doesn't know how to make a move. You know, tell a girl she's beautiful and all some of those things. But yeah. And if he did that, Jasmina was not interested. Mm-hmm. You know, so it just played out. And so I still don't, A, understand why they even said yes. That uh, part. Why they even said yes at the end of the part of it. Mm-hmm. And then if this is the argument that broke it down and Michael wasn't the one engaging, why would he engage with you? You wouldn't touch the man for two months. Yeah. I wouldn't engage with you either. I'd be like, oh, you mad? But be mad. Well, Whatever. Think, but think about it. She said that he did, he stopped talking to her for a whole month in the very beginning. So it shows, again, the lack of communication on both sides. But to me, and tell me if you see this, I thought that he was almost intimidated by her. Do you think it was that whole aggression comment? You know that, what? That like You're, really freaked him out? It probably once was. Once he heard that, he was like, oh. Yep. Yeah, because that's right, because he did say the aggressive. When she said he was aggressive, that that kind of was the reason. And that's when they, he backed off for a while. Um, because she even said that it was interesting. And for me, it was interesting to hear that, that her say that she's the one that started all the conversations. Because he's like, well, he tried. And she's like, no, 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 I tried. You didn't. And this is post um, cameras and everything else. Um, but the thing that really surprised me the most was to hear the experts analysis of it like well you know the fact that you guys are doing this kind of proves that there's something there i'm like no they just try to prove that i'm right and you're wrong that's all there is to it there's nothing there and <laughs> there hasn't been anything there have y'all watched the show there was never anything there but as we're having this conversation i started thinking to myself that aggressive comment if that's the thing that shut him down because mm-hmm. i mean imagine if you were like dating somebody and Maybe I'll start to make out. And she's like, no. I said no. No means no, Yanni. You're going to be like, shit. I'm not going to touch you anymore (laughs) until you give me the green light Mm -hmm. to touch you. I'm not going to initiate anything. But I I think that maybe that just broke him down. But there are, what is there is a friendship. Yeah. That's what's there. They picked out BFFs. But (laughs) there's not anything romantic that that's there for them. And I still blame Jasmina for that. And not saying that she's wrong. She's not attracted or interested in him. Yeah. And then when Noe said, when they had the girls together, what kind of person does Jasmina need? Someone really smart, intellectual, because she's really smart. What makes somebody really smart? Mm. Because I'm like, what, what is, what is it about Jasmina that we were wowed with her intellect that Michael didn't have? And that why Michael wasn't a good match for her intellect. Like, what did we see on the show that shows that she's more intellectual than Michael? <laughs> and well, if Noe is saying that, it's like, because she can say a couple bigger words than you, Noe, because you're <laughs> you're young. That Jasmine is this intellectual that she needs, you know, fucking Stephen Hawking intellectual person <laughs> to have a conversation with her? Come on. <laughs> Touche. I'm just saying, like, she needs but, someone to look like Michael wasn't. I think yeah. they were still at the same level, and they were at a good level. But like, what? How much more intellect does Jasmina need? Maybe emotion. Maybe emotional in- intellect is what she was speaking of. <laughs> well, no, she said. She said because Jasmina likes to have deep conversations and talk about real things. Uh, yeah, Jasmine didn't want to talk about shit. Let's be real. And <laughs> she really, she really did. <laughs> and, and, and and let's be honest, what happened with Jasmine? Because even at one point, at the end of that whole sit down with the experts, the experts like, well, you never know, anything can happen. And she's like, mm mm. Um, what they're forgetting is that she actually sat down with a psychic. Remember this. Her and Michael went to a psychic, and the psychic said she's going to have um, babies in um, in a year. So she's already met her future baby daddy. Um, so she's not <laughs> thinking about Michael. And and to your point of them being BFFs, they're not friends anymore. I think that computer conversation, once the cameras were done, that was over. Um, they're definitely Michael's, um, his, his body language, the entire show, especially even when you get down to the very end, shows that he is 
completely checked out with her. He's done. He's like, I'll never see you again and we're fine. Good for him. I'm About glad time. he's doing that. I mean, go go find you somebody that really wants you. She doesn't. Exactly. You know, um, speaking of other couples that are done with each other, Lindsay and Mark. Who we uh we know Lindsay's a whole lot. We already talked about Mark and his bullying. He goes in and says it to, to Lindsay again, right to her face, like, I've never been bullied like this um, in my life. But let's be honest, he wanted no parts of the accountability um, for his part in this destruction of the marriage. And I'm glad the experts said, no, you both destroyed this marriage. Mm-hmm. They both did. And... I'm trying to figure out where he went wrong. And I feel, excuse me, I feel like it was the honeymoon when they're having all this crazy sex. Mm -hmm. And then he decides to pull back and I want to go slow into this process. You've already crossed that line. Yeah. And when they started out, Lindsay went all in, right? You ever been in a relationship that's just hot and heavy? You're all in, surprisingly, right? That's what happened there. And I think that's where his downfall was. Mm -hmm. But the fact that he was scared of her he couldn't speak up. He right. couldn't have a cut. So he would wait till everything would escalate, then finally say something. Mm-hmm. You know, where I'm like, you got to be able to talk, communicate. So because he was scared of her, he just he, he's just not the right one for her. Um, yeah. It's interesting that you brought that point up because you know what? It wasn't until today because I missed it the first time when Lindsay spoke about it. She even said that in the moment. She said it after when they talked about it. Um, the fact that he waited, they, they were having fun all day. Then that night they had a romantic dinner. And um, then he says to her at this romantic dinner on the beach that she, he wants to pull back on what they're doing. And she's like, I don't think it was her whole um, delivery of, well, that's, this is a real romantic dinner. I was like, I, I think that's what stood out to me at first. But as I look back at it now, now that time has passed, I go, you know what? She's right. Those are mixed messages that he sent to her all day that night. And then when she's like, oh, yeah, we're about to take this to another level tonight. And then he's like, yeah, so uh, about that. And they had sex before dinner. Yeah. Before they left the hotel to go to dinner, they had sex then. Let's be fair, though. You have had sex with somebody before. And when you're done, you're like, you know what? We probably don't need to do this again. I would never have taken that person to dinner. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have been like, let's let's go here. It's back in my twenties. It's Red Lobster. Let's go to Red Lobster. And as I'm as I'm eating my cheddar biscuits, I'm gonna be like, you know, I was thinking we need to slow this down. <laughs> this is moving way too fast for me. Do you want another biscuit? No, this is moving way too fast. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> would have been just as bad. <laughs> you know, once they got done with the couples sitting down with the experts, the couples that didn't they didn't work out and the experts, um, the whole cast came out and we found out that um, Elijah is the worst expert and even worse than the experts we had on the show because both of the couples that he gave advice to broke up. He gave advice to Jasmine and Michael. He gave advice to Lindsay and Mark. And he said he they constantly gave them advice. He's the wrong person. They're stupid for taking any advice from him in the first place. <laughs> well, but also look at the personality types. Mm. Elijah one would not put up or tolerate Lindsay or Jasmina if he was married to them. And those things were happening. Yeah. He would speak up. Mm-hmm. He would have no problem calling it out. So I, I would have loved to see him and him and Lindsay as a couple. Woo wee. No. <laughs> I just don't think that would have worked at all. Oh, I don't think it would have worked, but I I would rather see him and her go at it and somebody actually fight him back rather than watching him abuse Katina this entire season. That 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 was painful to watch. Well, she got her new ring, she got her new wig. <laughs> she's happy as flies on shit, as my mom used to say. So she's good. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Not the new wig. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, she got a new ring, new wig. You know, when the whole cast was sitting there, um, they went back to a scene that you and I talked about that we thought really was 
the defining moment with Lindsay and Mark, and that was the bowling alley scene, especially when she went to the bathroom. Um, what stood out to me today is the fact that she sat there looking at it and laughed at that. And the experts have talked about the lack of respect that she has, the lack of empathy that she has. And you can see there in that moment, the fact that she was laughing at it. She knew what she was doing in that moment. She knew, mm -hmm. she said, well, even if she comes and says, oh, well, you know, I, he wasn't there. I was just talking to somebody about it. No, but you knew you were mic'd and you knew that that was being recorded. You knew they were going to use it. And so that's why you went in as much as you could. Mm -hmm. And shows that she's not, she's not sorry. Regardless of the apology she gave, she was not sorry for anything that happened. No, she wasn't. I think that was the the biggest problem because I think in, in episode part one of the reunion, <laughs> yes, I think um, Mark handled that a lot better mm -hmm. than, than she did. But she can look at that and see that she did no wrong. Mm -hmm. And I, that's all her whole life is. It's not her. Her parents are the problem. Yep. These other guys are the problem. Mm -hmm. These engineers are the problem. Mark is the problem. It's never her. And so the common denominator of her and all her relationships and everybody she's distanced herself from is her. Yeah. That introspect she she lacks um she lacks the ability to to be introspective and look at look in the mirror and actually see herself. She looks in the mirror and sees mm -hmm. somebody else. Um not quite mm -hmm. sure who. But whoever it is in that mirror, it's not who we see when we look at the TV. And um, and that's not based on looks. That's just based on the internal. There's there's no way that she looked at all that and was like, ha ha, that's all funny. Because they've really pointed out the fact there's a lack of respect. And they're right. She ha she does not respect him. And he checked out. When he checked mm -hmm. out. And I, I we didn't blame him when he checked out. Because she was so over the top. I'm like. I would have checked out from the minute she walked down the aisle drunk. Are you kidding me? Yeah, but I think the moment she started being a bit much, which before they had sex, mm -hmm. that's the point Mark should be like, hey, hey, I need you to dial that back a bit and kind of check that because that's what Lindsay's saying she wants. In a guy. That's what she needs, exactly. And that's what she needs, but you got to like call that out. You can't let her... Go, you know, all those times when she'd be all playful and want to be goofy. And he's like, stop, stop. You got to be able to look at her and be like, hey, look, I'm not in the mood. I need you to stop. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Good. You know, I don't mean to mix shows, but you got to pull up a loud and be like, I'm going to put you out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he did say that's what he learned from the show. He said, so in my next relationship, I'll be like, no, you do not talk to me like that. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I just don't believe you. Yeah, he's not going to do that. He's still a toothless he's shark. <laughs> He's not going to do that. He's going to. And and that's just it. Like, what kind of woman does he need? Obviously not like an alpha female, because mm -hmm. that won't work for him. But what kind of women do. What would be the right fit for him? You know, is it. I can't even think of it. You know, I, all I can think of is like Little House on the Prairie. He needs somebody like. <laughs> that's just going to wear a bonnet, not make a lot of noise. Where are the dresses that cover from the neck? <laughs> so so he's, Martin, he's Martin a time traveler Quaker. is what you want. <laughs> yeah, he should become a Quaker. And go out there, grow a beard, get off technology, oh, Jesus. get away from social media. <laughs> <laughs> Martin the Quaker. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> oh, my God. Look, you know. Season's finally over, but yet there's still one more episode to go. Um, the where are they now? Um, Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the interesting thing is um, I, I feel your frustration, and I think a lot of people do with this season, and it's like, oh, my God, what, what happened with this season, right? Um, and they stretch so much stuff out, and then this. So... Look, we'll be back next week <laughs> for the Where Are They Now as we put the wraps on season 14. Prayer Warriors unite so you can get Terrell to agree to season 15. No, as we put the wraps on Married at First Sight <laughs> for good. I think We're I have done. faith. I have faith in the Prayer Warriors that this can still happen. I've seen the couples right. for the next season. It, it it looks like it. It looks like another amazing season. No, <laughs> another amazing season of hours and hours of bullshit. No, we're not doing it. 
<laughs> Don't forget Not Sunday, good. we're dropping the um, 90 Day Fiance recap, season nine recap. It'll be episode seven um, this Sunday. And then on Monday, we've got our regular audio episodes. On Tuesday, we drop the video um, for that regular episode. So a lot of content for you guys. Make sure, again, you like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. You can always find out when we drop stuff, and especially when we drop clips as well, too. So appreciate all the comments. I'm Yanni Root. I'm just Terrell. Make sure you follow us at Yanni Root, at just Terrell, and at RGRT Pod. I'm going to start saying, I'm just tired. Tired of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> you only got one more week to say it. Yeah, I don't want to say it for season tired. 15. You can just, say it for season 15. It's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to send us some of your random thoughts or just some of the bullshit that you find on the internet. We'll talk about it on the show. I found some bullshit for you, season 15. <laughs> we didn't talk uh, about it on the show. I'm. Hold on, I got a bad connection. What? <laughs> <laughs> let me grab my let me grab my mouse. Your audio's not working. I can't hear you. It's the regular guys' random thoughts podcast. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>